Hello and welcome to Subjective Insights. Just finished a 15 hour shift, so I'm tired, but I have drank a stupid amount of coffee. So I'm very kind of alert and buzzing. But I'm kind of in that stage now of tranquil nakedness that I find quite pleasant to be in. Anyway, let's go into the free will thing a bit more, but not so much to bash it now. You would be forgiven, right, because of my views on free will, for thinking that I'm a determinist, that I believe in causality. Um, no. It's not an either or situation, right? So now then, causality itself is another theory about reality. Uh, and it says that a cause makes an effect happen, you know, that this object, like, like, the, like the billiard balls, you know, snooker balls on the table, that one snooker ball hitting another snooker ball is what causes the other snooker ball to move. Now, there's this Scottish philosopher called David Hume, he's one of the main empiricists, one of my favourite philosophers. Yeah, I'm a philosopher fanboy. Anyway, he, he says that before you have experienced what happens when one billiard ball hits another billiard ball, how would you know what it's going to do? You wouldn't. You, you, you discover through experience that it does. And if I ask you, why does the ball go flying away from the ball that hits it? You would say because they're both hard, which you mean they're both impenetrable, which means that they both push each other away. But, but why do they do that? And you can't really answer that question. You can just shrug your shoulders and say they just do. And um, so... Another theory that could explain what's going on is the spontane spontaneity, you know, that things just happen that way. They just, they, they, there's like a, a kind of, it's just what they, oh, that's, I'm saying what I said before. But it could be a spontaneous kind of occurrence. Even in sounds, there's this on and off gap between the bits. Anyway, well then, you might turn around to me and say, oh, Chris, right, Chris. Uh, how, how, if you don't believe in causality, why don't you believe in free will? Now, this is because free will, as it's kind of preached by most people, is, is the kind of groundwork, you know, the foundation for me saying to you that you are to blame for what you do. And um, any person that you ask... If I was to say to you, um, is a stone to blame for what it does, you know? Are, uh, like, mentally handicapped people to blame for what they do? You would say no. So the kind of moral force of the free will argument lies in it being exclusively human. That's what the, that's, the Christians will say, look, we have free will because we exclusively are made in the image of God and nothing else is, okay? And then they use it to go on to justify why God will send us to, to hell and punish us for our wicked misdemeanours. Had a spot there. But if... So, for me saying that I don't think causality is real... Or I don't, I don't, I don't believe in causality just as much as I don't believe in free will. What I'm saying that that that, that spreads to everything. So it, it, it kind of it says that, that the the rocks and the stones and the trees and all that lot they're not causally related to each other. There's something else going on. I mean, Alan Watts he comes up with a good image to describe an alternative way of looking at things. That imagine you were looking at a cat walking past a kind of peephole in a fence and you could only see a bit of its body at a time. You would be forgiven for thinking that, that the, the bit that you saw first caused the bit that you saw afterwards. But, but that, 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 that kind of relationship wasn't caused by an outside force saying, look, that bit's got to do that to that bit. It was caused by an internal identity of the cat with itself. And that's why the head comes before the body and the body before the tail not because there's somebody outside of it who's made a law structure saying that you've got to you've got to like uh, it, it, bodies have to go after heads you know that there, there isn't a kind of lawgiver behind making it happen it's just what the cat is and that's why 
the relationship appears between the head, the body and the tail. And, and so that would be the same for everything. That's why we witness, that's why there's so much evidence for causality. Because everything is really identical. It's just all parts of one whole. And it's not that there was an outside force making it cohesive, that that's making it behave as it does. It just behaves as it does because of what it is. Yeah, yeah. That'll be it for today. Goodbye.